Good morning, Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. <clears throat> and of course, the situation calming down overnight. The bombs stopped coming in. Iran is saying that they have retaliated. Uh, they're saying to Israel that they should not engage any further than what's already been done. Uh, we'll have to wait to see how that plays out. Uh, but uh, also, I want to make one correction too. Uh, Roddy, the brother we have there in Israel there, he did ask me to clarify. He is an Israeli Jew. He does believe that uh, Yeshua is the Messiah, but uh, that is something that he uh, mentioned to me there. And he didn't ask me to do this here, but I just felt to set the record straight there, but do pray for him and his family, uh, as well as Saman Tov and many others that we know there in Israel as well. Israel, though, is vowing to strike Iran tonight. <clears throat> I want to share with you some different things there uh, coming out of the Middle East there regarding these things there and how this could end up getting very bad. I'm looking for some particular information here before we get started. Here we go right here. This is where uh, on the Street Insider they're reporting Iran warns Israel against retaliation. Global powers urge restraint. And as I said to you, one intel source that I have in the Middle East there had said to me, Iran didn't even begin to fire at Israel what they could have. He said, if Iran was really going uh, an all out an attack, he said, and this is before any of the analysts came out, he told me that it would be 800 missiles would have been fired at Israel at one time. He said, knowing that they would overwhelm, overwhelm the uh, David Sling and Iron Dome system there and obliterate the country there. Uh, I know Roddy had sent me a video early this morning. I'd asked to make sure they were still doing all right. And uh, he had showed me some video footage that uh, I haven't had a chance to download it or anything, but uh, how everything is normal, business is normal as usual in Jerusalem there. So it doesn't appear that Jerusalem got hit. It seems that the only place that really took a hit uh, according to the reports that we're finding, is it was the Israeli military base where the F-35s are housed at. There was significant damage done there that actually halted the base temporarily. Uh, Vladimir Putin also has weighed in on these different issues. I want to play that clip of him for you right now. Like it when someone tells or acts not in accordance with their wishes. They only believe in their own exceptionalism. They believe that they can do anything. They do not want durable peace at the Holy Land. They need chaos in the Middle East. That's why they are discrediting those countries that insist on the immediate ceasefire in the Gaza Strip, insisting on stopping the bloodshed and are willing to make a practical contribution in the resolving this crisis, not trying to gain from this. Even the UN, the clearly stipulated position of the global community, is attacked and bullied and being discredited. I would like to emphasize this. In our approaches to the situation in the Middle East, unlike the Western stance, we have never had any wish to gain anything from that. We have always clearly stipulated our position, declared our position, and it has, hasn't changed across the years. We stand for the establishment of the full flash Palestinian state. And that was Putin's response there. But, you know, Putin is not the only one uh, that responds like that. Scott, let's see, not Scott Ritter. Hang on, we'll come back to Scott Ritter here in just a moment here. This, uh, uh, this uh, man right here, uh, House of Representative, uh, hang on one second here. He told us this back in 2019. I'm one who believes that we should have been doing more all along to weaken Hamas. We've talked about Iran today. We have not discussed the inconvenient truth of the fact that Prime Minister Netanyahu himself saw it in his interest to keep Hamas in control in Gaza. Don't take my word for it. Uh, he told us this back in 2019 at a Likud meeting party party meeting where he said, and I quote, anyone who wants to prevent the creation of a Palestinian state needs to support strengthening Hamas. This is part of our strategy to divide the Palestinians between those in Gaza and those in Judea and Samaria, end quote. Netanyahu. 
After all, so long as Hamas was in control in Gaza, how could anybody ask Israel to accept a Palestinian state that included Gaza and the West Bank? Good question. So Prime Minister Netanyahu and his extreme right-wing partners have embarked on a concerted strategy to weaken the Palestinian Authority, which recognizes Israel's right to exist, and to strengthen Hamas, which doesn't. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to enter into the record a, a piece that appeared in Haaretz in October of last year, a brief history of the Netanyahu-Hamas alliance. Without objection, it be included in the record. <clears throat> Just to go to show you, though, that Hamas, Netanyahu, is the one that has helped create the monster that they blame all the evils of October the 7th on. Um, Scott Ritter in this clip here really shows that with the Samson option being on the table with Israel, if one nuke goes off in Iran, it's going to cause mayhem across the planet. Listen to what Scott has to say. It can stop now, but Biden has to get on the phone to Netanyahu. Two things. One, immediate ceasefire. Immediate ceasefire. Immediate. Stop. Two, Netanyahu, resign. Get the hell out of Dodge. You're finished. Those two things could save the world. Otherwise, Benjamin Netanyahu's narcissistic, narcissistic, you know, spree that he's on right now could not only destroy Israel, guys, it could destroy the world. I mean, to just put two and two together again, because Israel has this thing called the Samson option. And once they get swamped, nuclear weapons will fly. And once nuclear weapons fly, you can't control. You can't tell me you know how this is going to end. You can't tell me that when a nuclear bomb goes off in Tehran, that somewhere in Islamabad, Pakistan, somebody just doesn't say, unleash the beast on Israel. Pop, pop, pop. Three nukes, Israel's gone. Everybody's dead. And once that happens, India, not understanding what happened, could end up preempting or you know, sending a preemptive strike against Pakistan. Uh, then the Chinese might get into this, and then we get into it. Then the Russians get it. <laughs> Screw it, man! It's all dead. This might be your last broadcast, Danny. People, the world is literally moving in that direction. This is not stuff to be made fun of. The escalation ladder that can take place here is um, is real. And with that being said, there one thing that. Came to mind. I haven't mentioned EMP Shield in a long, long time, but I'm going to tell you something, friends. This is really getting to the point now to where uh, I think that uh, you may, if you haven't got an EMP Shield yet, you need to really sincerely think about getting one, and I wouldn't put it off. Uh, I always recommend the vehicle is the most important thing there, so if your loved ones are out traveling, something like that happens. Iran showed that they will actually make a strike, and they made a strike on Israel. And the United States is certainly not off limits to that either. Uh, when you go to get one for your vehicle, and I've got a video on my channel. If you just put EMP uh, on my channel in a search there, you'll find that video there uh, on how to put it on your vehicle, which EMP Shield, I think, also has that type of how-to type videos there. But once you get that and you add that to the cart there, let me try to get to the right spot here. Um, you want to be able to sh be sure that you uh, include the INL50 code. There we go. Now we'll add it to the cart. Oh, I guess I already did it. We'll go to the cart there. Right there where it says coupon code, I, I for Israeli, N for news, L for live, five zero, because that's $50 off is what they're going to give you. You apply that. They've got a discount on right now anyway, so that's even better. So once you put that $50 off on there, it'll lower that price uh, by $50. And, uh, and I actually have two things in the cart there. That's why it's $7.98, but uh, that $3.99 would go down to $3.50 is what it would go down to. So you want to save the money on that. They, they have them for everything you can think of, though. So if you want to get it for your house, if you have solar panels, you want to get it for that. You know, just whatever you have need of, uh, you want to be able to do it. And it doesn't matter how many times you get something, they're going to take $50 off every time you add that coupon code. So think about it. It is serious, and I think it's something at this point now it's well worth doing. I uh, also want to play this here again. Israel in Gaza, has several Palestinians have been injured after taken, Israeli forces opened fire on open, them in mm, Gaza City. This is it. 
Hundreds of displaced families were trying to return from central Gaza to the north along a coastal road. More than 100 Palestinians were killed by Israeli snipers on the same route in February while collecting food aid. It just never stops. Uh, but I did hear for the first time since the war on Gaza had begun tonight was the first night that, uh, that there were no deaths uh, as a result. So that's the only good thing we could say about that. Israel was too preoccupied with Iran, Iranian missiles coming in to be able to do anything. This is very disturbing as well. Um, Palestinian mother is dragged from her son's grave because Israel is demolishing the graves, the cemetery there, in order to make way for a theme park there. Uh, this is just how evil it gets. Earlier this month, an Israeli court rejected a Palestinian request to stop the work on the park. Wrestling with the pain, this Palestinian woman refuses to leave her son's grave. These Palestinian protesters have gathered to oppose orders by Jerusalem's municipality to build a park in place of the graves which still lie here. There, you know, there's just no dignity, there is no, cons no mercy, there's no nothing um, in the Middle East there when it comes to these things, and it's just a tragedy. I'm Stephen Benoon, you're watching Israeli News Live. We got our video loaded over there on patreon.com forward slash Israeli News Live. I am going to be going into this issue in Antarctica. Uh, uh, there's been a couple that have put out some very good videos on that, including BP Earth Watch and also M. Uh, how do you call it? MM. Uh, uh, boy, that's a tough one to say there. Uh, but anyway, uh, I have a little different theory on that. I'll load that on Patreon uh, here in the next couple of days here about what happened. Why did they have 80 foot plus seas? And they say it's very turmoil, tur uh, turbulent ocean there. I understand what turbulent oceans are. And uh, so we'll talk about that as well. But this anomaly that happened, I don't think, I don't think it's a, uh, an asteroid. And I don't think it was a spacecraft. But what we do know, they do have a hydrogen collider in Antarctica. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live.